The Women Conquer Business Show is an educational how-to women in business podcast that features stories, marketing news, and real-life experiences from fun and friendly hosts, Jen McFarland and Shelley Carney. Join us as we dive into the details so you can slay marketing overwhelm, streamline processes, and amplify your impact. You'll learn strategies and tactics, leadership skills, and practical advice from successful women entrepreneurs to help you grow, nurture, and sustain your business. (laughs) Hello. Hello. I don't know why I'm giggling, but there's something today about the amplifier impact that just made me giggle, even though I've heard it for weeks and weeks. Hello and welcome to Women Conquer Business. My name is Jen McFarland. I'm joined by Shelly Carney, the amazing Shelly Carney. This week, we're going to talk about skyscraper pages. These are powerful authority building content that you can have to help your small business. Last week, we talked about topic clusters. If everybody remembers the whole chocolate cake example, that's making lists of topics or content themes based on your expertise. You know, it's it's nice, you know, and it's good to have a list, but what do you do with it? So this week we're going to talk about skyscraper pages. They're sometimes called pillar posts or 10 X content. They have a whole lot of different names for it. Um, And we're going to talk about this technique and think of it as the center of that topic cluster. So if we're thinking about like the ultimate guide to chocolate cake, And then how you break it all down so you can really stand in your expertise. So I, what I wrote is think of this as the ultimate guide to ultimate guides. (laughs) So that's what we're going to talk about today, but there's also a lot going on in the world and in our lives. So let's talk about everything. Every, all the things, all the things. That's right. I am doing well. I am expecting my husband to come uh, pick me up in Arizona. He's coming tonight. We'll be here for a couple of days together and go home on Sunday. So I'm pretty excited about that. And uh, my mom is doing well. I think everything takes about two weeks. She's been home two weeks this Saturday. So I think she's well transitioned. Uh, she's been to see the doctor. She's got her meds lined up. She's got her home health care workers lined up. Everything in uh, medical equipment wise is is in place. So I feel like they're ready for me to go ahead and go home. And, you know, my my studio is here. I'm leaving everything here if I need to come back. And I'm also going to teach them how to do video doctor's visits before I leave so that oh, she doesn't yeah. have to get into transportation and go to the doctor because that is a big effort uh, and it's very stressful for them both. So I will teach them how to do that. And uh, they've got that lined up with the doctor on making those visits with the video camera. So we're excited about that. That's really awesome. You know, (laughs) and after my dad died and we've kind of have a same situation lined up where because you'll you'll still be coming back and forth so you need to have something set up so that you can come and 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 work and do things and and it's the same thing with me going back to Boise to visit mom and help her out with some things I have a a setup now I this last time I actually did kind of what you did um, Mm -hmm. when I was there in April where I went and just have like a whole setup in a bag, like that I can just kind of plop on the desk <laughs> so that I'm able to kind of work and, and get things done because it's just, it's just the reality when life changes, right. you have to be prepared for that. So Toby calls that a field kit. He packs oh, it all in a tote that. and he, when, whenever we have to go somewhere, he can just grab it, throw out the truck. We got a yeah. field kit. Yeah. Well, and I saw in your newsletter that, Toby's out of town. And then we had it affirmed this morning when he called <laughs> right before the show, which is not something he would normally do if he's in the same time zone, but he's several time zones away. So that's, that's pretty neat too. I'm glad that he's doing that and getting to see his family. Um, yeah. Really last night thing. he was talking to me about maybe moving to Florida to be with those grandkids. And I was oh. like, oh, I, you know, I'm not going to stand in your way on something like that because family is yeah. important, you know, family's really important. So, so, yeah. Um, how about if I save my crow story until the end? Um, okay. There is a lot also going on in the world. Yeah. And I would say it's it's been uh, as a survivor of sexual assault and as the owner of Women Conquer Business, <laughs> it's been phenomenally difficult to uh, 
see everything that has changed in the world. I don't really feel like we are conquering anything as women right now. Mm -hmm. It's a very difficult time for in, in the United States for women's health. It is. And uh, it, it's just a, a challenge. It's just been very difficult. That's right. You know, I think back to high school when I had friends, some got pregnant, some had their baby, some had abortions, some gave their baby up for adoption. I, you know, we experienced the entire gamut uh, in high school. And these girls are now being told, uh, you know, everything is illegal. You, you know, you, you don't, you don't have any choice. And, and for a, uh, you know, a millennial, a Gen, a Gen Z person to be told, you don't have any choice. What's <laughs> going to happen there? I think I see I see a lot of uh, pushback <laughs> coming yeah, you know, a lot. It, it's interesting because uh, Roe was instituted before I was born, so mm -hmm. it's it's not something that I've ever known. Mm. It's just something I've I've seen, or read about. So it's it is a very difficult time. It is again, it, it's the to totality of it as a. Uh, again, as a sexual assault survivor, like if, you know, cases of rape and incest and um, when the mother's life is in danger in particular, um, you know, I, I, I am pro-choice, but it's also in these cases that are considered, generally considered exceptions, <laughs> even in the pro-life movement, like that are just gone now for 50% of the population. Um, and they it don't makes have me control. worry that yeah. uh, we're going to lose our OBGYNs. You know, yeah. uh, I am yeah. very likely going to have to have a hysterectomy this year. And I'm like, I need it now before there's a, uh, a scarcity of OBGYNs to go to. Yeah. You know, well, I, we live in different states and that's kind of the complexity here. I live in the one state in the union that has a law that says it absolutely cannot be taken away, mm -hmm. um, at least right now. And mm -hmm. that's Oregon. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the only state in the union like that. So I acknowledge that my situation is different than other people. Um, so it's really about making sure that resources are available so women can make health decisions. So, mm -hmm. um, so it has been very difficult. Um, I don't want to spend too much time talking about it. Just yeah. kind of an acknowledgement on it. Acknowledge um, that we feel the same <laughs> things you're all feeling. And yeah. please reach out to us. We are open to having discussions with you uh, about whatever it is you need to talk about. And if you are interested in starting your own live stream or podcast to get your message and your voice out into the world where people can hear you and what you've got to say and your activism, please contact us and we'll help you get through that uh, initial transition. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So um, my chat today, well, so my chat item that I had put down is actually related to the podcast and it's, uh, and because I have a really good podcast episode about this whole incident that happened and it was one year ago today. So it was when I was kind of doing off and on podcasting last year, just when things would come up, I would, do an episode about it and so a year ago today a crow a live oh. crow <laughs> flew down i listened to that episode I, I, when i first like <laughs> discovered you that was what i listened to was that one and i'm like okay this woman's wild and crazy <laughs> so we and the amazing thing about this is so we had a, a crow fly down our chimney and we're like man we should really get some chimney caps like, cause like you can put a lot of people here have them. You could put caps on your chimney. So like that stuff doesn't happen. <laughs> have we done it? No, <laughs> chimneys still need caps. So what happened last year, I can put a link to the show um, in the show notes is so this crow fl flew down the chimney and we have like glass doors. So like the glass doors were shut. All of a sudden we start hearing this crow and I'm like, that crow is really close. <laughs> so I like look in and I was like, ah, crows in the fireplace <laughs> and so it's like this whole like chain of events we called all over the earth to try to find somebody who would come and they're kind of like 
best of luck, lady. <laughs> Go for it, you know. Yeah. So there's this whole story with like a soccer net and like all kinds of stuff that we did, you know, to like shoo the crow out. It turned out when when we went to get the crow out, like it the crow was just relieved and wanted out anyway. So like it had no interest in flying around the house. But that was kind of our fear was that this crow would be like wildly flying around the house. And so I used that episode, I used that incident to talk about how to deal with the unexpected in your business. At least that's how I remember that episode being. Um, and that episode goes into much more detail and the hilarity of like that whole incident. And it's funny because I mentioned the chimney caps last week to my husband. <laughs> we were walking around the neighborhood and um, but I had forgotten that it had been a year ago. So that is kind of a funny thing um, that happened. And I it really made me smile to see that Facebook post of like, here's what you were doing a year ago. <laughs> Chasing and a it was crow. this whole crow in the chimney. He's like, you know, trying to figure it out. So, um, so with that, uh, I guess it's time to go on to uh, breaking news. Breaking news. Da -da 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 we don't have any music today. <laughs> <laughs> We're, it's a work in progress. Breaking news. Okay, so this in from Descript. Descript is the transcription uh, app that Jen and I use. Uh, we take our audio, we put it up into Descript, and it very quickly uh, transcribes it. And then you can pull out filler words. And there's lots of little great things in there to help you uh, manipulate that text. And then you can also create audiograms. And Descript is announcing that they're, they are unveiling a transformative new way of making video. So uh, you can already do some video editing in there, but it's clunky. Uh, it's a good place to go if you don't know anything about video editing because it's a simpler way to do it, but it is a bit of, it's clunky for those of us who know how to edit video in another way. Yeah, about the only way I use it for editing video is it will take out the filler words automatically and edit the video. And I use it for that. But yeah, no, I don't use it for the other stuff. And you probably know more about editing video than I do. Um, and it makes me a little crazy. Yeah, it's 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 very time consuming to edit it edit video and that's why we just do live streams, right? Right. You do a live stream, send it directly to a podcast, then the only time you're spending on it is the prep work and the actual uh creating of it. So on yeah. July 13th, the they will have a live stream at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, and we'll put the links to find that in the description box, but you can just go to their YouTube uh, page for Descript, and they'll be teaching about their new way of making videos. So I'm looking forward to that. Oh, that's awesome. So um, can you put those links in the chat just in case people need it? Yeah. Um, and I'll take the, before we start the training, I'll, I'll just take the a minute to kind of mention something else um, about privacy. I mentioned it in my newsletter. Um, there are there are some concerns about things like using period apps and, and you know, that now that mm -hmm. um, abortion is a crime. So if you track your abortion or if you track your period and that can be subpoenaed by law enforcement, that's a very real concern. Um, that's actually how people don't realize how much information is available on the Internet. That's something that and how much information is tracked. And that's something that I worked in for a long time uh, at the city of Portland was data security and keeping information safe. And so if you are using any online tools for your business, for your personal life, be really aware of all the things that you're putting out there. And there are some really great articles. Uh, there's a, I can put a link to my last newsletter, which is also kind of like a blog post of up. Uh, my my friends over at Near Media also did a podcast episode about it and a and a and a blog to describe kind of the intricacies of of how that privacy works and and how that kind of changes for women. So just kind of be aware of that. It, it's that it's kind of making the rounds on social media, but it really is a very real thing. And I can. I can we can put some links in the chat about that, but just be aware that in general, <laughs> Google and Facebook and Apple and they all know s tremendous amounts about us based on what we post online. So be sure that you keep that in mind, um, not just in terms of health information that you have out there, but also 
just in general uh, to keep your privacy safe. So, um, oh, what does that say? Oh, it's Julia. Hi, Julia. How about when your iPhone asks you if you allow apps to track? Are they tracking even if you say no? They're not supposed to. I would say that if you, you know, make sure that you use <laughs> more enterprise grade apps that are more likely to abide by the rules. Um, it's better than, you know, some off brand kind of app. <laughs> Um, the, the truth is we don't really know. Um, we don't really know for sure what's being tracked and what's not. Um, I will say, and I was going to do it for my newsletter and it's just, it's too complicated. There are ways that you can go into Google and check your security of, you know, like if you have a Gmail account or if you have a work Google account, I recently saw through Google security that my business name, address, phone number, and email had all been compromised. <laughs> so it's very real. Um, I'm getting all kinds of weird stuff now that looks real that isn't. Um, so just be really careful. And um, yeah, if you allow apps to track, um, just know that they're tracking everything, you know? And there are some apps that track like your keystrokes, that track like everything that you're typing in. And, you know, so you want to get in the details sometimes about what it is that you're doing. And I, I have a whole blog post about this, about uh, website security and privacy. Uh, John Oliver has done a couple of episodes where he talks about things like data brokers and selling of your data. I like these, even though they're not super in-depth because it makes it achievable for people to kind of wrap their head around it. And so he talked about... He talked about it twice. He talked about like kind of who owns the internet. That was like probably about two weeks ago. And then a, about a month plus ago, he also talked about data brokers, which is to say that there are people just capturing all of the data, <laughs> you know, Google. So Google and Facebook get as much information as they can and they sell it to data brokers and they use it for whatever because they're selling it to other people that use that information. So when we track, when we allow people to track us, we don't really know where that information is going. And that's one of the reasons why it's scary <laughs> and we have to think about it. So that was a really good question, Julia. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you again for watching and listening and asking questions. So that's right. are we ready to talk about skyscraper pages and content? Yeah, let's climb right. that size skyscraper, get in that elevator and hit get the Get in there. Bing. Boom. Look at that. So I did make slides again. Um, last week, I was able to embed them in my website, <laughs> which is kind of a cool little breaking newsy type thing that you can, you know, embed your Canva into your website and make it look like a little slideshow, um, which was kind of cool. That could be why a lot of people watched last week's show and, and versus listening. So what we're going to talk about are skyscraper pages or other types of content that you can use to build powerful authority building, customer attracting <laughs> content to help you build your business. So just to review a few things from last week, because there are some people who maybe didn't uh, have a chance to listen or watch. And I think it's just really important to look at some of these things again and again. It really helps it sink in. So the first is, you know, how are you communicating and bearing in mind that this is what Google looks for, but it also is what is really helpful for you as an entrepreneur in terms of how you communicate and how you bring yourself forward. So Google is really interested in the expertise of the creator, meaning you as the business owner. So how, how good are the resources that you're providing? What is it that you know? What are the other things that you're talking about in the ecosystem of your expertise? That helps you rank better. It helps people find you for a certain expertise. Then we have the authoritativeness of the content. So it's not just you as the person, it's also what it is that you're saying and how you're putting that out into the world. Are you linking to other people? Are people responding and reading the content that you create? Um, and then the third aspect, aspect is the trustworthiness of your website. Has it been around for a while? 
Um, you can also buy up multiple years of your domain name. Um, so you can like, I do this where you prepay like five years out and it just shows that you are serious about your website. It helps Google understand that you're not a fly by night web scraper, just putting stuff up that you actually have the intention of keeping your business around for a while. So expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness this is called EAT. Um, and that's what Google's looking for. The second step is to really think about the content funnel. Understand that people are looking for things for a specific reason. Some people just want a general, general information. Some people are navigating and want like a mega guide or a walkthrough. Some people are looking to buy something. It's they're, they're trying to compare products because they want to buy something. They're ready to buy now. They're looking for things like testimonials that say, this is the right product for me to buy. And it's important to understand all of these people <laughs> are looking for different things, but ultimately, you know, they might become a client. So you want to really look at your content through these different filters because it helps you build out the content that makes the most sense. Are you still there, Shelly? I'm actually, I don't have multiple monitors, so <laughs> I can't I'm still here. Shelly right now. <laughs> We're working on Jen having a second monitor. We're working on this. We're <laughs> efforting the second monitor. You know, maybe Toby can send me some ideas. So, uh, so you're still there. Do you yes. have anything to add to these, to the review so far? Uh, nothing that I didn't already say last week, which is just keep these in mind. And each one of those can be a video or you can combine all of them into one video, depending That's on right. uh, what it's about. That's right. And then yeah. you use Descript to transcribe it, make it into a blog post. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that too. I mean, honestly. So um, the third part of the review is we had our topic clusters example, which is to say that you have a topic like chocolate cake and you break it down into smaller posts. But today what we're actually going to talk about is that ultimate guide. We're talking about the center of your topic cluster. So you have one topic. And when I was talking about my own business, one topic could be marketing. Like this is all within the marketing realm. And so I might have one, one post that really brings forward my philosophy around marketing and then all the little subtopics, like, you know, it could be SEO, it could be email marketing, it could be, you know, everything around marketing that's specific, um, but they all relate to marketing. So what we're going to talk about is the chocolate cake. So the center of our topic cluster. Um, and so now we're going to start talking about some new things. So there are lots of different words that can be used to describe skyscraper content um, or long form. And I'm saying long formish content types because not all of these are necessarily long form. I think that when we, the reason we went back and talked about eat um, is that you don't want to just make things long for the sake of being long. <laughs> it has to genuinely be a broad topic that is worth being long. Right, Shelly? You can't just talk about something ad nauseum if it's not interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, you'll, and you'll know because people start repeating themselves and you're like, uh, you had that further up in the blog post and now you're repeating it. And now you're repeating it again. Uh, I don't need to see it three times. Are you an AI or a human being, you know, cause a human being shouldn't be doing that kind of thing. <laughs> Absolutely. So, and, and you'll look on here, there's like four different types of content, uh, cornerstone content, and that is content related to your customer journey. So it's not necessarily long form. This is more function over length, and it usually links out to a lot of things. It kind of sounds like it uses your topic cluster. This is where you're going to see a lot of these things overlap. So you're going to send people out to other things about your expertise. So that's like one form of topic clusters being used to link out to other things. Another one is skyscraper content, which is the word that we use to describe today's episode. Um, and that's around uh, Brian Dean from Backlinko. This is the term that he uses. Um, and he's talking about building backlinks that emphasize length. And what backlinks are, it's content that's so good that other websites link back to it. And part of his philosophy is about how to go out and pitch people to like link back to your websites. I get these pitches all the time and sometimes they're just nonsense. <laughs> so, you know, only go out and like ask people to link back if, if it's a worthwhile cause of doing it. 
Um, but skyscraper content emphasizes length. So you're really dissecting all of the different pieces. Um, and then if you link out to your own content, guess what? It sounds a lot like pillar content. It sounds a lot like cornerstone content. Um, and so that's the second piece. So that's skyscraper content. The third content type is 10x content. And this is you go out and you look on the interwebs and you see all of the things that are ranking for your topic. And you're like, well, that's not very good. <laughs> I'm going to do something that's 10 times better. And that was, that's a 10 X content was coined, I believe by Rand Fishkin and in about 2015, I think. And so that just means that you're going to write something that is 10 times better than what's ranking now for a particular topic. And that sounds a lot like cornerstone content because you're really writing something that has a function that is really serving your customers and helps people more than what is already available out there. So that's the third type. The fourth type is pillar content, which is often com compared to skyscraper content, which is you know publishing a comprehensive guide with a cluster of supplementary pages, you know, e.g. topic clusters. <laughs> and pillar content was created or coined by HubSpot. So those are your four types of content. The pillar content is very similar to skyscraper content, very similar to 10X content and cornerstone content. So if you're looking at all this and you're like, well, what the heck do I have to do? Guess what? You're not alone. <laughs> I'm calling this the small business content dilemma. And that means you only have so much time, so much money, and you have to have the best value. I use different iterations of this in my presentations. Um, you don't have time for all four different types of posts. You just don't if you're a small business owner. And honestly, even if you're a solo content creator, you don't have time to be constantly focusing on all four of these content types. You don't have the money <laughs> or the resources for an army of content creators to help you build out all four post types. Um, and so you need everything to be valuable to you and your customers. And when all of these things are in balance, it's no longer a dilemma. You are a happy content creator. What do you think about that, Shelly? I think that individual content creators, content entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs have an advantage because we can, and this is what I do, we can take content uh, that is good and we can read it and ingest it, you know, all on one topic. And this is how I wrote my article on LinkedIn this week. I, had, I read the other articles on that topic. I thought about it. Then I made it personal. I told my story from my point of view, what's going on in my world. But I brought in all of that uh, information. And I basically, I showed it uh, in action, right? Here is, yeah. here is it go. Here's where it goes on in real life. Here's how it works. And uh, here are some examples. And that to me is just illuminating, right? I can read all the dry, boring textbooks, but until you've shown me how it works in real life, how you can implement that day by day, then I can't use that information. So you can be that person that interprets, right? All that, like Jen does this, she takes that, that, brainy, nerdy stuff that, that people have a hard time with. You know, our brains kind of turn off sometimes with certain things. Mine's like math. I don't want to, I don't want to deal with math. But yeah. if a financial person could come in and say, here's what my client did and here's how it worked and they did this, 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 that I can relate to, that I can read and understand and enjoy and consume. And I want to read that. So that's how Absolutely. I feel about that topic. <laughs> I agree with you. And we're going to, I'll, I will show you how much I agree with you <laughs> on the next slide. <laughs> on the next slide. Um, on the next slide. slide. But what I, I you know, Bridget, the Br Bridget Willard the Great came in with a question, skyscraper pages. I'm curious. So what we just talked about is skyscraper pages are very similar to pillar content, pillar post content. They are also very similar to, um, you know, 10x content where you go out and make something better. Skyscraper content was brought up by Brian Dean of Backlinko around having content of length that people are likely to come back and backlink to. Uh, so that is, <laughs> that it's like pillar content. Yes, we make up all these words. 
So uh, just, you know, you'll have to go back and, and see all of the things. So yes, it's very similar to pillar <laughs> content. It's very similar to cornerstone content, 10 X content. So here is what I believe is the small business content reality. Nobody has time because nobody has time to do all four content types. We have a real opportunity, as Shelley said, and I really, I really believe that this is kind of how it works. What we have to do as small business owners is we have to create cornerstone content. No matter what it is that we make, it has to be relevant to our customers. That's like the bottom line. Like it doesn't matter how long it is. <laughs> It doesn't matter. It just has to be relevant. So that's why last week when we talked about topic clusters, it was all about what is a main topic that you can talk about, for example, marketing, and then what are all of the subtopics around that that you can uh, talk about that are making a lot of sense, you know, that are related to that topic. So uh, I'm getting distracted by comments. I'm going to try and not look at comments and at the same time. <laughs> do this. So cornerstone content is really the main bucket for what it is that we need to focus on as business owners who are creating content. It always has to be relevant. I, I posit that no matter what it is that you create, it's 10 X content, meaning it's 10 times better than other content because it's within your expertise. So you have to always remain in your expertise because it's always going to be better because it's original. It is about what it is that you know. It's likely to be also be skyscraper content if it's relevant and it's necessary for it to be longer. It is more likely to get links. People are more likely to link back to it. So what I will say is, for example, <laughs> as we've discussed a couple times before, I was interviewed for a documentary because I wrote a snappy article about ClickFunnels and why it shouldn't be used by every online business out there. And a lot of people linked back to it. A lot of people are finding it because I wrote something interesting, different, and necessary that was also very relevant to my customers who are small business owners. So that's an example <laughs> of skyscraper content that got a lot of attention and got a lot of links. I didn't do the work that Brian Dean suggests, which is going out and actively hunting down backlinks because I'm a small business owner. I don't have time to go out and do that. I just write interesting stuff and I pay attention to the keywords I'm using so that it's more likely to get more eyeballs and more attention. Which brings us to the pillar post, which is also directly related to our topic clusters. Um, because it also shows expertise and a depth of knowledge. So pillar posts like skyscraper content are very long and relevant and also branch out into your topic clusters. But for me, everything has to fall into the cornerstone bucket and then length is determined by relevance and necessity. What do you think about that, Shelly? Well, I just wanted to mention that uh, Jen does actually ask people to, to backlink to her stuff. But the way she does it is an automation. And she taught me this through Missing Letter. She puts her content out there as curated and promotes it. Uh, and people can, you know, get that, see it, and decide if they want to share it with their audience. So in that way, uh, she's taken that step of, you know, sharing out her content and having people link to it uh, and share it with their audience, but in an automated fashion. And, and I think it works really well. It actually does. I always forget about Missing Letter Curate. It's just part of what's baked into my process now that like after the after a podcast is over, we go, you know, I post the link in Missing Letter Curate and, and it gets out there. So like for for last week's show, for example, it's already uh, scheduled to be shared by, I think like 80 people. I mean, it's just kind of crazy. Like, and these are people I don't know. Mm -hmm. So, so I do have it kind of baked in there, but I don't go out and individually like talk to people. And so I get like a social boost from it. And I think some people do end up linking to it, um, on their own websites. I mean, that's kind of the hope. So, um, so that is kind of how I do it because I don't have time to go do it. There's a lot of different ways of doing it. Um, 
I also, my weekly newsletter is like a blog post and I link out to like different things that it's related to. So like today it's a one year anniversary of the crow in my house. Like, <laughs> so now we're going to link back to that episode. And, and that's one way of saying, oh, this is relevant. And this is the other thing that I've talked about. It's kind of natural, right? Because it's just organically what happens and we link out to it because I am living in that same content reality. Shelly's living in that same content reality where we can't create four different types of posts and, and, and fuss around with it. So we're doing it ourselves. We're finding a way to navigate this. So anything to add there? I just went to where I can't see you again, Shelly. So, oh, well, I um, think that um, when you've been doing it long enough, and as Jen has said, that your first 100 blog posts are practice, uh, when you've been doing it long enough, you automatically start including all of those things in everything that you write. And then every now and then you'll go, I need to take a stand on this. And that becomes your pillar post. And then you want to say more about it. So yeah. those are your branches uh, that, you, that you're coming off of that pillar post with. So it just happens kind of organically for you once you've been doing yeah. it long enough. Yeah. Well, I will say that that ClickFunnels post was in me for years before I ever let it out. <laughs> so one of the reasons it was so long is that I had had so many clients uh, struggle with it, so many issues that it finally just erupted um, into this one post. And that's why it gets attention because I took a stand on something and it's not necessarily a popular stand. Although if you talk to a lot of small business owners that will say that ClickFunnels did not work for them, um, even though it works for some. And, and so it's important to take a stand and talk about things that are relevant and helpful to your customers um, and understand that you don't have time to do all of the things that all the experts tell you. <laughs> so this is why this is around setting priorities around what you create, how you create it um, and how you maximize it to help your customers and also help your business. So here is another way of looking at it. Uh, just some questions and advice on like how to navigate this. So for your cornerstone content, it's what do my customers need to know that will help them understand my expertise and make a buying decision? That should be kind of your guidepost for whatever it is that you're creating and how to help them you know, understand holistically who you are and, and why you do what you do and how you do it. So, it, and that's like the overall, the overarching idea around the content that you create. Then inside of that, the if you think about the 10x content, it's how can I make the information out there better or different? And this is really important. Sometimes you don't realize how much different your stand is on something until you start to dive in there. And you'll look at what other people say and you're like, well, that's that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so think about this as like a guiding question, a piece of advice that you can use. When it comes to things like skyscrapers and pillars, it's really like, what are other people saying in my industry? People are more likely to link back to you if you're saying something a little bit different, something a little bit interesting, or even if you're aligning with other people. Notice I, I gave full credit to <laughs> HubSpot, Rand Fishkin, and um, Brian Dean around these different types of content. Like these are thought leaders in my industry. So I am saying they're right. <laughs> there are all these different types of things. And then I'm further making it a little different by saying, and if you are a small business owner, this may not work for you to create all these different types of things. So I'm also making it a little bit different. The pillar content, you want to think about how does it relate to other content that I have or can create? And that's kind of going back to the topic clusters that we talked about last week. So you have a broad topic and then you can break that topic down into all of the different pieces to share the depth and breadth of your expertise. So when you put all of that together, again, we come back to making sure that whatever you create is helping guide your customers into what it is that they need to know in order to understand your expertise. You still there? I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being quiet. But uh, being quiet. yeah, 
uh, your customers need to know the information, but they also need to know how to use that information yeah, and, and why it's important. And you can give them an example of how you use it or how a client uses it, then that's going to help them understand it better. Uh, the more uh, you can fill in those gaps with real life examples and uh, how it actually works, then the, the more useful it is to people. A hundred percent. Yes, that's, that's exactly it. So when we look at it in practicality, if we go back to our chocolate cake example, you might have an ultimate guide to chocolate cake. <laughs> First and it starts again, off with eat and then you're going chocolate cake. I mean, and again, yeah, and again, there's no picture our of sponsor cake. on this show. <laughs> it's just so like Betty Crocker or what is this? <laughs> I, I mean, I don't I haven't had time to reach out. So <laughs> don't know. Um, but if we had the ultimate guide to chocolate cake, you might have a paragraph about how, how to find the right recipe. Just a paragraph, a little part of it, right? Whoa, what just happened there? Uh, you might have like a, a little paragraph about, you know, finding the right recipe, but it might link out to various chocolate cake recipes. So you might have a, another post that really goes into, uh, you know, more in depth around it. You might have a section about gluten-free options in making chocolate cake that would link to chocolate cake recipes that might include a gluten-free option, or you might have a separate, and you might have a separate post also that is, is, is flourless chocolate cake gluten-free. And then guess what? The chocolate cake recipes would link to is flourless chocolate cake gluten-free because you might have a recipe in the flourless chocolate cake post. And then you might have another paragraph that is why chocolate cake is good for your health. I mean, please, please, somebody tell me that it's good for my health. <laughs> um, and then that paragraph would link out to some of the nutritional facts about chocolate cake. So as you can see, none of then that would all be within your ultimate guide to chocolate cake post um, that links out to more in-depth information about a specific dimension. So this is one example for how you can create expertise driven posts or content. And again, this content can also be created on social media, can be created on video, however it is that you are creating content you can kind of break things up in a certain way and give the value that your customers need. And at the same time, giving them a little intrigue, giving them a little bit of guidance on how to navigate things. And then, oh, by the way, if you want more, <laughs> here's how you can hire me. This is kind of how this content wheel works. Um, but you notice that there's no post on here that suddenly is like coming out of left field, like, you know, how to buy the best baseball glove. Like it's not related to that. And I, I gave a talk last week where somebody was a consultant and had a post that was ranking really well in a topic that was completely unrelated to the work that they did. And we had a little conversation about how important it is to stay within your expertise um, when you are sharing about what it is that you do on your blog. So, or even on social media, you always have to tie it back to your expertise because if you're getting a lot of traffic on something that isn't related to what it is that you do, it really doesn't, it's not really helpful. <laughs> yeah. You don't wanna just get traffic for the sake of traffic. You wanna get people coming to your site that are likely to be interested in what it is that you do and how you do it because you don't have time for, you know, random celebrity posts or things like that. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I was thinking is celebrities giving political opinions. And it's like, well, they're not a politician. They don't work in government. So do they really have much weight to their opinion just because they're on television or they have a large platform? Uh, and, and, you know, and we forget that sometimes that, oh, well, so-and-so said it was true. So it must be true. Well, maybe it's, maybe it's not, that that's not their lane of expertise there. You know, if they're an actor and then their lane of expertise is being an I actor, <laughs> um, anything related to that. <laughs> so if you like this kind of training and these kinds of hot tips, I highly encourage you to subscribe to the Women Conquer Business newsletter. That is at womenconquerbiz.com slash newsletter. 
That's and right. uh, do you want to talk about your weirdly excellent LinkedIn newsletter? <laughs> you betcha. Uh, I'm going to paste the link in oh, okay. the cool. chat. And um, so this week's LinkedIn newsletter, I talk about personal brand. How do what is a personal brand? Why is it important? What goes into a personal brand? And I give examples and I and explain the reason that this came up in my personal life. You know um, what what it means to me why I needed to understand it better. And then I share my understanding in my LinkedIn newsletter. I also relate it to today's show. I talk about, you know, pillar posts being a part of creating your personal brand. What is important to you? What your experience has shown? What your expertise is all about? That goes into your pillar post. And it's also helping to define your personal brand. And the reason it's weird is because I use Weird Al Yankovic as a personal brand example and talk about all the things that he's done. And I mean, he's one of the longest lived uh, personal brands out there. And, and he's capitalized on weird, being weird. And I talk about that in, in my article because my daughter is a big fan and she wants to have a podcast related to Weird Al Yankovic. So it's all tied together and it's all very personal, but it also gives some uh, some light to the topic of personal branding and what it's all about. Yeah. 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 Getting mad props from Bridget Willard. Great info, ladies. I hope everybody else is getting a lot out of this. If you enjoy this, please, please share it. Please subscribe to the channel. If you're watching it on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, wherever it is, um, please share it and like it. Um, and we hope that we're really helping everybody out there. Uh, are we ready for some tweaks of the week? We are. Tweaks of the Uh-oh. week. Tweak, yeah, tweak, tweak. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> tweak, 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 tweak. Tweak, tweak. Uh, okay. <laughs> Go ahead. You got this. All right, Toby and I found a new product on AppSumo this week that is uh, available for lifetime purchase. It's called Product Dino, and it is a product selling and delivery platform where customers can access all of their related purchases from you in one place. So if you're offering free downloads, PLR, courses, paid and uh, free, uh, if you're offering any type of digital product whatsoever, you can put it on this platform and you you send them all to one place and they can find it all. Or you can, you know, they can find just what you want them to find. So you can place a product and you can put it in a collection and uh, have people come in and it's, it's got the you know, the email integrations, it's got integration with a program called Wombat, which is a word of mouth uh, type of a reward system for people who purchase or even get your free stuff that they share it with their social media contacts. And you reward them for that through this. Uh, it's already set up. So you don't have to think about that or understand it that well because it's done for you, <laughs> which I love because I don't I see all these things out in the world and I'm like, oh, I wonder how they do that. Oh, that looks so hard and complicated. It, it, here it's done. It's also got an LMS, which is your uh, your learning management system, so that you can work with people who are going through your courses more closely and help guide them and uh, give them quizzes and uh, just check on their progress. And there's a lot of analytic analytics baked into it as well. So we're really enjoying that. Um, it is touted to be an alternative to Podia, Thinkific, and Kajabi. So if that is something that you've been looking at or thinking about for your own business, but they're out of your price range as they are for me, uh, this might be a great alternative for that. You know, it's interesting as you were talking about it, and I know we talked about it before the show, but when you're mentioning it, this could be a really great alternative to Member Vault. It sounds yes. a lot like Member right. Vault to me. And for those of you out there who maybe were priced out of Member Vault because they recently changed their pricing structure, this could be a really good alternative for that. It's called, again, Product Dino. I, when I saw this in the notes, I was, it reminds me of another product that's, that does something completely different. So I was kind of surprised when you told me what this is. I, I hope that this is good. You know, I always... I'm always very intrigued. Uh, my tweak of the week, it's so funny. It also happens to be from AppSumo. 
I have some clients called Snap Downloader. I have some clients who are pulling their content off of Facebook. Um, I have other clients who just want to move their videos to someplace else. Um, Snap Downloader, it lets you download videos from YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Vimeo, and it says other places as well. It is typically a subscription product, so it is monthly, annual, that type of thing. It's also available on AppSumo uh, for $30 right now. Uh, I'll put that in here. I have been using it uh, this week um, just to test it out, and so far I've had really good luck with it. If you've ever tried to kind of capture some of your content from other places and like you, like usually they're really scammy, like websites that you have to go to, to like put in the link. And then it says you can download it. And it usually seems like, you know, you're not something that you want to do kind of getting back to the privacy stuff that we talked about earlier. So uh, this is a really good product for that. It's $30 one time lifetime to use snap downloader. And uh, I'm definitely going to send it to a couple of clients who, like I said, are interested in moving platforms. Um, it's just important to have, if it's content that you own, you know, if if you don't want to buy this, just make sure that you have a backup somewhere of everything that you create <laughs> so that you can keep it because it's yours. You made it. Uh, and um, I don't know if this is part of your workflow, Shelly, when you work with clients or not, you know, that you kind of help them, you know, download the the videos from StreamYard or whatever so that they can they can keep a copy somewhere. Well, we do recommend it. And of course, Jen is in our in our StreamYard, so she has total access to all the videos and audios. And uh, so she can take them and put them on a hard drive or do whatever she needs to do with them. Uh, we Once they're up on YouTube, we're pretty happy with that because you can always go into your YouTube channel and just download it from there. It's very simple. Um, but if you've only been putting it on Facebook, then it does kind of just go off into the ethers. So I would recommend something like this for, uh, for yeah. that type of a situation. Of course, you know, you can't always rely on YouTube to keep your stuff forever, but how for far back do you want to go? You know, yeah. kind of, it kind of, yeah. What are you going to yeah. do? And yeah. And I think it works too in, you know, in the case of, you know, Twitter spaces and different things, LinkedIn lives, if you're only going to one spot, it's really good for that. You can't, you absolutely can. I always forget about all of the capabilities of YouTube, <laughs> but you can download already. This was just slick because you could just put in the YouTube link and hit download and it does it. Mm -hmm. So it's more of an mm -hmm. ease of use, I think, when it comes to YouTube. Now, if you do have a show where you are showing other people's content and then you're giving reaction to it or, you know, you're showing it as an example, uh, this might be a really great tool for that as well. Um, just always yeah. ask, I would always encourage you to ask permission from the, from the owner of the content, if you're going to show it on your show. Yes. We have people <laughs> that do that with us all the time. They'll ask us, uh, can I, can I show a piece of your content? Uh, we've also had people who just flat out stole our content and put it up and uh, yeah, <laughs> we had to cool, shut yeah. that down through YouTube. So you got to keep so, an eye out for stuff like that sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is a, this is very much about use your powers for good. Yeah. <laughs> this is exactly. not, this is not use it for your own benefit of stealing yeah. other people's stuff for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, what you got? I feel like being inspired. You want to be inspired? Yeah. Da Ding. <laughs> Today's inspirational nugget comes from Marcus Aurelius Meditations. I may be saying that wrong. I apologize to Marcus, but you know, he's, he's dead, so he's not going to know. <laughs> he said, the mind adapts and converts any obstacle to its action into a means of achieving it. That which is an impediment to action is turned to advance action. The obstacle on the path becomes the way. And that sounds really cool, but it's like, what does that even mean? <laughs> so you have the power of turning obstacles upside down, taking a negative circumstance and using it as an opportunity to practice an unintended virtue or form of excellence. So whenever something comes up that's an obstacle or seems like a really negative occurrence, take a look at it and say, how can I use this obstacle as an opportunity? What can I learn from this? Where's the gift? I'm always asking myself, where's the gift in this? Uh, and I'm sure that more things will come 
from those obstacles that we don't see yet. I have faith that doing what feels important and right is always the right course, even if some other things need to be put on hold. And in the case of myself, I had to put my business on hold and come to Arizona to be here with for my mom, uh, for my family. And that was the number one priority. And now that they're in a good place, I can, you know, go back to what I was doing. But things will come up in our lives and we have to say yes to those. And then we have to say, I can put my life on hold while I focus on this because it's going to bring me so many rewards. Even though it doesn't seem like it right now, it will in the end bring me those rewards. I feel closer to my family than I have, you know, probably ever. Uh, you know, my brother and I've talked more in the last couple of months than than we have since we were kids. And, you know, there are just so many things that we can get out of these situations if we just look for the gifts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. That was good. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. yeah. And I hope that helps some people feel a little bit more hope. I know this is a, it's a really difficult week for, for a lot of people. So <laughs> look for the gifts. How can you make right. a difference? How can you find uh, a way to, to rise in this current situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks everyone for being there. And uh, we hope that this has been really helpful. If it has, please subscribe, share, talk to your friends about it. This is the Women Conquer Business Show and we will see you next week. Thank you for joining the Women Conquer Business Podcast hosted by Shelley Carney and Jen McFarland. Please subscribe and leave a comment or question regarding your most challenging content creation or business problem. Then share this podcast with family and friends so they can find the support they need to expand their brand and share their message with the world. Check the show notes for links to valuable resources and come back again next week.